Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We're back. We're back and we're carrying on with food. So without further ado, open your packets of crisps. I'm still hungry. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and welcome the Unfiltered Bride podcast. Tips from the top table and beyond. So you know it's going to be juicy. This podcast has been sponsored by the wonderful Crafty Lab. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that I got married last year and these guys created one of my favourite elements of the wedding. Oh, I love them. These were your newspapers, weren't they? Yes. So we used them as a little guide to the day for guests. So we included order of the day, crossword, bridal party names, our love story, QR codes for image sharing, Spotify playlist link, and believe it or not, more things. It was so personal and you know that I love a bit of personality in a wedding. They're professionally designed for each couple so it's not just a template that someone else will have. Each couple gets a truly unique newspaper. They don't print until you're 100% happy to. So even for you type A brides, you'll love them. They have amazing customer service. They really cared and went above and beyond to make sure that we were happy. Which we were. A small business with a big heart. You can have them anywhere and everywhere. And you even had them in the taxis on the way to the ceremony and dotted around the venue. But I've also seen them on ceremony chairs, wedding breakfast tables and in accommodation. And at 89p a copy, why wouldn't you? So head to thecraftylab.co.uk to secure your spot in their order book. But be quick, there are limited slots for each month and once they're gone, they're gone. So get them booked. You definitely don't want to miss out. If you're wanting to find out more, we've popped their details in the description below. Okay, I've just had a packet of skips, like genuinely just had a packet of skips and I'm ready. Do you know what? I hate it when people say generally. When they're going to say genuinely. I didn't do that though, did no, I? No, you didn't. But oh, okay. It just reminded me. No, How it's like me? specific and pacific. Oh, that really annoying. And me. I can't then carry on the conversation because I'm looking at them thinking, you uneducated swine. Yeah, but people probably think <laughs> that about me. That is true. You or are us. the type of person to say pacifically. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are. I, I, I understand grammar. I I understand grammar. <laughs> I from... Gl- <laughs> actually from Cheltenham. No, you're anyway, not. Anyway, so food. I hope last week was... Helpful. Helpful. But we're going to go in deeper now. We're we'll going go in, in deep. We're going deep into the frying we'll pan. We're on topics. And this is more logistics. Yes. How to make the food work for you and how to help your caterers. Tasting menu. Yeah. How not to be a dick. That's a, just a life lesson. Um. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I want to talk about is the different types of caterers. Yep. So let's do it like the supermarkets again. Ooh. ready so to me how do i want to say this so like some venue and again 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 go way back to before you book a venue if food is the most important thing to you you should not be booking a venue before you tasted the caterer's food if they're in-house catering they will charge you for that that's okay but it's worth it if if food is top level importance you should not be booking a venue if they have one caterer and you not have tried the food okay <laughs> what if you've got like a wedding venue yeah of in-house caterers yeah how do you go around about getting tasting for that because I they would... won't do it frequently i just think i think you can't book a venue without having tried their food okay, okay but i need to know how hun um well you have to speak to each venue <laughs> hun, how how tell me how you have to speak to the venue when's their next tasting so this is so this is where it then gets all complicated is menu tastings when they offer them whether you're in groups i don't like the thought of a group menu tasting but I don't know if I'm just mm-hmm. a narcissist. I don't think that's the right word. Well, I googled it recently and I think I am part narcissist. I wouldn't admit that on this podcast. No, but let me read you what it means. Because you know when they talk about it and they're like, oh, you're such a narcissist. And it's like really Yeah, they bad. talk about it on maths. Oh, Who else is watching Married at First Sight, by the way? Um, Married at First Sight Australia, if you haven't watched it, it's going off. Okay, this is the nine traits of being a narcissist. And you tell me genuinely if you don't think that you... I have some of this. I'm not fucking admitting that. Yeah, but sense of self-importance. What What do you mean? I need more than that. A sense of self-importance. Do you think you're important? I am raising my daughter to think she's important. So how can I not feel like I'm important? It depends who with. Obviously, I'm important at work. I'm the fucking boss. <laughs> Narcissist. Anyway, next one. <laughs> um, preoccupation with power, beauty or success? No. Yes, you do. You wouldn't run a business if you didn't want to be successful. No, but I think doing that is using it as a... Like, using that. Like, be like, I'm so fit. You're not. I'm so successful. You're not. Uh, Okay. Entitled? 
No, not at all. No. Can only be... Oh, okay. This, this isn't the one I read the other day. Can only be around people who are important or special. No. <laughs> you know, you with Jack. <laughs> he's neither. <laughs> Jake's, he's important. Um, Arrogant. I wouldn't say I'm arrogant. Lack Would empathy. You? Am I arrogant? I do. I don't know what the word arrogant really means. I'm. I'm. Uh, what does arrogant mean, Brian? That you think you're better than everybody. I just think stuck up, like quite arrogant. I'm definitely not stuck up. Pompous. I'm not. I don't think I'm arrogant. But some some situations you've got to be arrogant. Mm, yeah, I think you are a little bit maybe. I think you're I need, more I am arrogant I than me. Mm, it depends on the situation. I think mm. when I'm running a wedding, I have to be arrogant. Is that the right word? A negative word of... Yeah, but I also think that the word bossy is meant to be negative and I think that's mean. Yeah, anyway, next. Um, lack empathy. Yeah, you don't. I... I. You don't know how to show emotion. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm just not very empathetic of things that I think shut the fuck up. Yeah, but... I think that comes with... I also... I lead with empathy with my team. But I wouldn't say I'm not empathetic. Like if there's you actually something, hold on, empathetic. hold on. If there's genuinely something wrong or serious, I will be the first person to come and help you. If you're hungover, help, and you can't get at, but up, not comfort. I think you can't. Comfort. It depends. With my friends, I could be comforting. But if you're if you're there to do a job, just do your job. You right. I mean? God. You're you're the narcissist here, not me. <laughs> um, must be admired. I don't think that. Yes, you do. You. Want, I don't. You want everybody to like you. Yeah, but that's not admire. I don't want everybody to be a, admire me. I want people to like me. Anyway, so we have concluded that George <laughs> is a narcissist. Yeah, but I don't think in a bad way. I think they need to seek too much attention and want people to admire them. People with this disorder. Absolutely. Yes. Maybe. You. Yeah, but so do you. No, I don't want people to admire. I don't want no, people. I don't to, want people to admire me. I don't want people to know me. A narcissist is most commonly referred to somebody in either like a relationship where like they manipulate situations yeah, see, I don't to make do that. somebody else always feel bad. Oh yeah, I don't do that. I'm not a narcissist then. Oh, phew, let's fucking move on then. Anyway, back to food. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, how did we get onto that? Let, oh, in-house caterers. There we go. So we were talking about Oh, yeah. So I didn't want taste. a whole group menu tasting. Yeah. I would like to have that experience. Which is not a narcissist. Fine. It's just a personal preference. Fine. Okay. So my personal preference would not be to do it with lots of other people. Yeah. Personally. I do like me and other people though. So I don't, I just don't think that is, depending on what caterer you go for, it's just not going to work logistically. Like if you've got a hundred brides and grooms or groom yeah, and groom, bride and bride. I want to try the food that, that I That means you've having. got to do like a hundred sit-ins on it. Yeah. And I don't want to just taste their food. I want to taste what I think I want to mm. have. So I think you will might most likely be in a group setting. Mm. I reckon it's about 50-50. Okay. Don't yeah. know. Um, so in-house catering is a whole one thing. Oh, oh, I can't talk. I can't talk and I'm a narcissist. Fuck, <laughs> oh, you know. Whole, no, in-house caterers are one whole thing here. Yep. And then you have outside caterers. Yep. So just for people on the podcast that maybe haven't, been involved in this outside caterers are catering companies that come into different venues to work there they don't they're not based at that venue basically so basically they hire the kitchen yeah so they and it doesn't just mean that they work outside mm -hmm. i think that is actually a confusion that happens they still set up a full-on kitchen or they use the kitchen that's at a place mm -hmm. they're just not based in the venue you don't have to use that that they one. don't work for the venue yes so for example a separate entity yeah it's a different business yeah even to the point where you'll pay different people yes um i personally like outside catering because i think it gives you that choice yep which again if food is important to you the choice bit is going to be important mm -hmm. if you're not really first it's way easier to get a venue that's got it in-house pick a menu yep what, your uncle. what i don't agree with mm -hmm. is when venues have one outside caterer that everyone has to use yeah that's not an outside that's, that's not an outside yeah. caterer like i think that's in-house you're, just... you're getting paid commission from that how do you feel about commission i'm not bothered about commission okay because because in all honesty we looked at it at one point because and we were paying venues commission to be on their brochure and mm -hmm. th attend their open days because they are putting us in front of an audience yeah, yeah. so essentially it's marketing, marketing yeah it's marketing but when is it enough enough that we're holding our own and people are coming to us because they know us mm. and they're just getting married at that venue and we've got to pay the venue? Mm. Like, mm. I don't think it's fair. I think it should be like a two-way relationship. Like, for example, we give, they give. Yeah, because when it works with catering is that 
they pay a commission because they're being put forward but equally they're using their kitchen they're using their space they you they can drop off stuff the day before blah 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 blah. so i get it i do get it but some catering companies will add that commission on and some people will hide it within their costs Mm -hmm. either way you gotta pay it you just might not know about it um what how do you feel about like the the further so within outside catering you kind of then have wedding caterers right through to like street food street food yeah where how important do you think it is to get wedding caterers if you want fine dining and you want a wedding breakfast plated sat down you need wedding caterers like you can get caterers that are fine dining but will only do like 20 people and Mm -hmm. it's a completely different operation completely different it's different to mass do 100 meals than it is to do a restaurant yep because it's timed Times, yeah and street food love it if that's the vibe you're going for then street van street food pop-ups are great may i give some tips for street food yeah okay why are you asking okay i'm just this is for the start Narcissist. Thing, <laughs> <laughs> um tip number one is you need to figure out if the food is coming to the table or people are going up you need to know which one you want but also how do you feel about people going up for food okay let me tell you how i feel and let me tell you how i deal with it so first of all nobody wants to be queuing at a wedding (sighs) yeah it's not it's not okay not cool (gasps) i'm sorry but i've just got this image in my head of people queuing up with a fucking plate in their hand (laughs) tray at at the buffet (laughs) like it's just not a way like i feel like a it's hard it's really hard actually because i predominantly do luxury weddings yes agreed so my mindset and my vibe and how i'd want my wedding all aligns that yeah however i do have clients that are in teepees and street foods and i love that idea as well because i'm kind of like yeah it's not my guilty pleasure i just love it as well i love both sides of it yeah but my mind and my clients are of that luxury market fine so I think you've got three types of wedding here and I can give you examples of all three. So we've got your type of wedding where you sit down, you'll serve the food, it gets cleared, end off. I want like, and this is another thing as well. Like I was brought up with white glove service. Yes, in yeah, catering. I, I don't like white glove service. Whereas I like Makes me it. uncomfortable. I like that because I think it's slick. It looks smart. You look the absolute bomb doing Too it. Too formal for me. That's like bougie. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Me and Brian have been to a few Michelin star restaurants and I have never felt more uncomfortable no, in my I life. No, I love it. Do you know why? why? And one thing happened once when I was working weddings, one of my first ever weddings, um, and they didn't want white glove service. And some fucking agency put their finger right in the food. And I was just like... <laughs> yeah, but what's the difference if they put a glove in the, in the food? But either, either way, that thumb was going in the potato. Yeah, but there's a massive fingerprint and then I just reminds me, it's like, it's like yeah, dirty. No, I'm n- I don't... I just anyway, feel uncomfortable. my bad and bougie gals and boys. I, I you know still think I'm you saying. can be bad and bougie without a white glove. Yeah, you can. I wore this in black gloves. <laughs> For fuck's sake, I don't mean the colour of the glove. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but I just don't like fingerprints okay, on plates. So we've got four types of wedding now. We've got fine dining, really deconstructed cheesecake style food yeah. served properly to the left, all of that jazz. We've then got probably the most common is full serviced food but not fine dining yeah. so plated put down sharing food in the middle like all to the table you don't leave your seat um yes that's Hold not on. fine dining huh? no i know fine dining's this oh, one okay, fine. fine dining's number one number two is the sharing food we but need still to served. supermarket this okay so we've got marks and spencers marks and sparks or waitrose marks and sparks is full-on serviced wonderful is that we- the best food no yeah it needs to be like whole food Obviously, doesn't even exist anymore, does it? Does it not? M and S. We've then got Sainsbury's, which is nice. Ni- you go a little bit nicer than norm yeah. on a wedding. We then have. I know because I don't want them to sound negative. They're just different. Uh, we then have a farmers market. <laughs> no. Yeah. We then have. Yeah, yeah. We then have a farmers market. So these weddings are the type of ones where, for example, you have a barbecue outside yeah and what I, which i love yeah love it love it and what i normally and it's normally a teepee or a barn or yep. something a Good little vibes. bit more informal what i always say to my couples is that i will call up table by table do not just do it as a free-for-all and people go up to it, it doesn't work yep you will all come in you will all sit down there will be name cards on the tables you still have everything set 
but then I will come over to the table and I'll go, ladies and gents, please go up to the barbecue, grab your, grab your plates, take your food. And then they go up and then they get that bit. And maybe the salads are on the table or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's that kind of wedding. And then you've got Grow Your Own, where it's kind of like festival vibes. There's street food, vans open. There isn't a formal sit down. There's tables and stuff, but it's not name. That's the only way you can get away with no like, table plan. Hello Fresh. Gusto. Get all, gusto you get all the ingredients <laughs> yeah but you have to do it yourself, you do it yourself. love it um so and again it's it's way more informal you don't you will get cues and things but actually because you do like a two-hour food service it's the vibe it's, it's cool. different yeah. yeah so i have done all four weddings and they all work exactly the same you just need to know what one i also feel like do. you do have to put a lower ticket in there like what aldi little no because mm-hmm. and that is your in-house catering at a probably a chain hotel that is yeah but that's still a it's still a sainsbury's you just picked the bad food no it's an aldi or little you can get bad food at in-house like no you can get bad food you'll you're missing the the sections the sections oh. of the style of food the style of service okay okay so we've got our Tesco. our tesco oh we didn't even get a tesco tesco is what you do at home make your dinners yep all right and chill. anyway um so they that was a kind of tip is making sure that you have somebody that's calling up table by table and can I just say this? If you're a guest at a wedding and you you can see what's happening, you can see that tables are being called up, don't go up and get food. They, they always just fucking skip the line and I hate it. I literally hate them. Yeah, but I'm that guest like, when's it our turn? Yeah, but if, do you know what? If you're the back when, table, when's you're last. It our turn? You're last. Sorry. I've also got another ick. Go on. Give another Shocking. One. I cannot imagine... Well, I can imagine because I've seen it and I really don't like it. A bride in her fucking wedding dress stood at a buffet, a buffet for those who don't understand, I'm taking a piss, <laughs> with a plate and letting someone serve her from a gastro tray. Okay, the it's gastro tray is the bit that's... It's that's just not it. my... Yeah, but that's... Say that I again. Mean, say what you're about to say. It's not my vibe. Fine. But... Not your vibe. I can, like, I don't mind them at a street food van or so. It's, like, quite cool and kind of, like, festively. But yeah. a bride stood up with a plate getting served or serving herself from a gastro tray <laughs> no thank you but again it's not your vibe if you're in a tp and you do but it does lead me on to my next point of please 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 make sure that your outside caterers have a good setup you need to know what it's going to look like yeah because you can do some it's food stations this is very much yeah. there's a buffet and a food station yeah yeah we don't want buffets I don't know why I say the word buffet. I'm actually taking the piss. I do say buffet. That's like I say mojito to piss off Brian. I yeah, know it's mojito. Yeah. I'm just being funny. I'm just trying to s- s- snazz up a buffet. Snazz it up. So I don't. I like when brides go. I think it's a great photo anyway for stuff like that. But it, again, it just has to fit the vibe. If that's the thing they're going yeah, for, yeah, like, then cool. I love it when they're in like leather jackets or a street food yeah. van. Like that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it just but not with a gastro fucking tray. Why are you getting these? For people that don't know what a gastro tray is, they're like the silver. That you get open a with the buffet breakfast with the what's underneath? It's like a bain marie, isn't it? It's got the boiling water, it's got a little, little gas thing underneath it that heats up the water, which then keeps the food inside hot. Mm. It's just a bit. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, Thanks. Those are the different. I don't disagree. It's just you can't have a really luxe venue, really luxe stuff, charge a plates and stuff like that, and, and then, then be going that. over to get sandwiches from a thing. Oh, how do you feel about afternoon tea? not against it don't love it don't hate it because i don't genuinely think it's a proper meal okay in some sense that if it's do- being done at five o'clock we want some hot food we want dinner so i for for couples that i've spoken to that want to do afternoon tea i i i think it's nice like if it again, matches that. the tone it's like you've got to have hot food in the evening yeah if like, you're going cold you have to then have something substantial pizzas, barbecue something in the evening which then also on the other hand is that you want people in the nice way possible you need to give people some carbs to fill i know afternoon tea is quite carby but like to fill up yeah soak up the alcohol i did um and it's nine times out of ten just as it bloody expensive that is true it's not that much cheaper although you're not doing three courses so you can save money on it also i feel like you can do a good afternoon tea and a bad afternoon tea like good savory stuff for an afternoon tea yeah. like like quiche quiche and mm. scotch eggs and you know like you can really like do Go a like. good afternoon tea so if it's a good one yeah i'm here for it sausage rolls <laughs> and like things like that like you, you know when you go out for afternoon tea you either have a good one or a bad one yeah yeah 
it's more dependent on the spa that I've just had. Mm. Right, I'm telling you a story. Um, I did a afternoon tea wedding when I was working in catering and it was all going out and it was all fine. And then there was a table and the mum said to the child, no, 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 don't fill up on that. Wait for your main. Oh, and I was like, oh, did you say anything? I can't remember. God, this is years ago now. And another thing with afternoon tea is like, an afternoon tea stand usually does for like two people. Oh, it depends what you can get. Yeah. You need a and few And there's a lot table. of stands. Yeah. I, I don't mind it. I do think it, I would say to put it in your like invite or something that, like that, all the timings or something that says. Afternoon tea. Afternoon tea. And then a couple of hours, like I would then do the evening food a little bit earlier than what yeah. normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just so people know, I don't, I don't think there's a problem with afternoon tea. I think it's just nice for people to know. I love afternoon tea Me as too. well. I do like afternoon and tea. And if it makes sense to you guys. Again, totally. If you're totally in Cornwall and you're doing scones and stuff like that, yep. I say scones. No, you don't. No, you don't. Scones. No, you don't. Scone. No, you don't. Scone. You're from Gloucester. You say scone. Scone. You're lying. Scone. You're lying. Okay, do you put your cream? Right. I'm going to settle this as well once and for all. Jam is spreadable, so jam goes on first. No! Jam spreads. You can't spread cream. I feel like there's a Cornish and a Devon yeah, way. Yeah, I can't remember which one's which. But... And I think I do it wrong. Basically, I am, my mum's from Cornwall. Of course she is. I spent a lot of my time in Cornwall. You sure that's the way around that Cornwall people do it though? No, I think I'm wrong and I oh. think she's disappointed in me for doing Fair. it. Fair. I it jam spreads onto the scone. And also, little tip, you should never cut a scone. It should be able to break in half mm. perfectly. Anyway, um, sweet, sweet or savoury scone? Oh, I hate... There shouldn't be savoury scones. Oh, cheesy scones. ones are scones. yummy. No, don't like it. I want my jam and my cream and I don't want raisins in it. Oh, I love the raisins. Nope. We're so opposite. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, okay, quick one. Yeah. Strawberry or raspberry jam? Strawberry. Raspberry. Depends if I'm put. So people... This will get me the hate, finally. Semolina. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah that stupid pudding. pudding you have. <laughs> and you put raspberry. That's why raspberry jam goes in that. Vile. No, semolina it's like is... baby food. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. Semolina is delicious. I'm more an Angel Delight kind of I girl. love Angel Delight as well, but semolina is something else. Honestly. Oh my God. I'd le- This is what I mean. It's like, I I feel like I could do two weddings because <laughs> I like... You could have a gross... <laughs> like, I completely love like old school desserts. I wish we'd done little pots of semolina at the wedding. Like, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. But, but I feel like I could have funny. my like luxe bougie one, and then yeah. I need to do like my street foodie one because like the street foodie one actually is such a vibe is more what we like. Like we like going to street food vans. Yeah. We like we like going like we like. You've got a fake ass. Beth and a real Beth. Yeah, but like my wedding is just I really want. Like, we have like we're not pretentious people at all. Like if anything, like we don't like Jack never buys clothes. Like. Do you know what I mean? Like, on this. like that is not the type of people we are. Like, our money goes into investments. We're mm. not brand brand people. Essentially, like you won't catch me in a designer handbag or any, which people will probably be quite shocked with. They'd be yeah. like, "She be bad bougie." Like the she only what? thing, bad and bougie. <laughs> but like, I'm not that type of person. Like, I'm just real and down to earth. There's down to no, but I'm just. There's only one thing. I always said I want a nice car. That's the only thing I have. Yes, yeah, I nice don't car. even care about nice cars. Car. Jack ro- drove around in this beat up little KA van, which I'm putting in commas because it was a fucking car that had blacked out windows and the boot knocked out <laughs> when I first met him. And he was like, I don't care. It gets me from A to B. Yeah, agreed. And he's probably, he's super successful and people think, nah. Yeah. When we were buying a house, they, someone literally was like, I don't know how you got that mortgage. <laughs> and, was like, and he was like, did you think I was a drug dealer or something? And they were like, yeah. If but, the shoe fits. But this is if where the I'm Louis like... the Louis Vuitton fits. The Louis Vuitton. <laughs> he does have nothing. He will shop I at Tesco yeah. if he wants to. There is nothing wrong with Tesco clothes. Exactly. I think there's some banging stuff in Tesco. I feel like the skirt I'm wearing might be from Tesco. I but love anyway, Tesco. my point is, yeah. I feel like I have two weddings that I really want to do, like a cool street foodie tapas, like old school dessert stations yeah. and all of that fun stuff. And then this bougie ass wedding. Yeah, which you're obviously going to do. So maybe I do two, which I think I'm going to do anyway. <laughs> If I get married, we move in on Friday. Ooh, is there going to be a ring? I don't think so. I think no, we're skin. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, what was I saying? I think my abroad one will be like quite bougie. bougie. Okay. Luck. And then the home one will be like, we're here to party. Okay. Like, a bit dirtier. Just to let you know, FYI. Okay. Like, just to prepare you. Okay, fine. Can't wait to plan two weddings for you. <laughs> but that must be really hard though for people. Because it's hard to pick. Uh, uh, from experience, it is so hard. When we looked at food... Bearing in mind at the time we got engaged, I hadn't long not worked for a catering company. So people knew me as 
she worked in catering like the food's important to pick the food was near impossible because how do you pick how do you say this is what we want to have on our wedding day like i love italian food i love a roast dinner brian loves mexican mm. J- japanese like literally I, we like all food i all i knew is i wanted it to be like hearty food i don't personally like like the fine dining style stuff i want it to be share and eat low and i want there to be loads of it but how do you pick these things mm. how do you pick your vibe it's hard it is hard i i would have like five weddings i mean i had two you can do two <laughs> two's a little so our what did we do for our oh we went to tgi, TGI fridays and, and rad's and the food wasn't great in TGI's actually, disappointingly. Anyway, and it's not fifty percent off anymore, which is always sad. Yeah, that was all. <laughs> I had a friend that worked there. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk about some things that people have not troubles with, but mm-hmm. questions they ask about paid caterings. It's so. Can I have a choice menu? Okay, let's do them as quick fire questions, and I'll answer from previous life. So, yes, you can have a choice menu. Not always though, because not every caterer does a choice menu. There, ninety. Okay, ninety-six percent of them will give you a choice menu. It sometimes costs more, yeah, which I can understand because there's more there's more logistics that go into it. It is then your responsibility as the couple to provide the right information in time and accurately and easy to read. So that's super duper important. I also then recommend that anybody that has a choice menu puts on either the menus or the name cards, even if it's just inside the letter of each thing, so that people remember what they pick because actually people do forget genuinely do forget what they've ordered mm. so it needs to be on something somewhere i'm just gonna what? stop you there don't put it on the name place don't like if you're having a menu put it as the menu no i mean so we used to do it sometimes where if that was a name on the back of it where people wouldn't look yeah on in the back pencil, written in just so that if there was a problem you go oh can i just have a little look yeah you're fucking lying susie <laughs> <laughs> okay uh it then takes longer to serve if it's a choice menu yep and finally that's it (laughs) so taste in evenings taste in the menu Mm -hmm. so we've had clients and couples that have said like our caterers do like certain nights a year and if you can't make it you can't make it and they won't do another one i mean that's the sort of thing that you need to ask people when you go and book at a venue because if it's really important to you i wouldn't book that venue yeah how do you give the caterers like the information? What's the best way to do it that makes it streamlined for everyone and easy for you? And yeah. I don't know if there was an option on the website if you book from if you do a website. Yeah. Website. So that's another good point actually. If you're doing a choice menu, you need to get the choices. You need to remember to ask people, and you need to remember to give the opportunity to write dietary requirements. So whether you do an RSVP online or whether they send it, you need to allow for people to write in something different. So we need to get this tasting in tastings need to be in before invites yeah, way before invites you need to know what your options are um it's obviously easier for everybody involved if you don't have choice Mm -hmm. so i'm just putting that out there throwing that out another one we found Mm -hmm. is that certain caterers will put like a from price because of inflation (sighs) yeah i don't like that personally because i have to include that within my own estimations for my business however I can see how it happens with it because something will suddenly go up in pride. Like butter's gone ridiculous, hasn't it? But it's not really fair on the couple that don't know what it's gonna. I, I think f- there should be a limit. Like it could be an extra two maximum. Yeah, X, which I think is quite difficult. You can't budget. Yeah. Also, and sorry, you just as a business, like we have to. Yeah. Deal with costs um, and little tip as well for couples is to always get your quotes for your maximum number of guests so that everything gets cheaper close to the wedding. The last thing you want before your wedding the month before when you're confirming everything is that it's all getting more expensive because you've got 112 people now and you budgeted for 100. So do it based on 120, get all the quotes for 120 and then close to the time you go, perfect, we've got 112, let's see the numbers. Depending on what the how much you can reduce. So where I used to work, mm-hmm. you could put a max of 150 yeah, and you're yeah, allowed yeah. to drop by 10% and that was it yeah. without being charged, which I get because we have to staff it, van it, yeah. forecast it, there's a lot that goes into behind the scenes that you guys probably don't realize. Yeah. So respect the process. Yeah, and, uh, and just make sure you know these things ahead of time. But typically you'll know how many people you're inviting and therefore what's then going to come from it. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to your thing about how to give that information, I think I need to make a, a template for this. But basically what caterers need to know is a really simple guide to look at. So tables, how many people are on each table and how many dietaries are on each table. That's mm-hmm. kind of, so you might say table three times eight people, two times veggie, one times gluten-free. Or 
two beef, yep. two chicken. Yeah, exactly. Break it, break it right down. I would have the Excel document that then has the names of people, dietaries or choice, and then dietaries, so that then they can take that information and use what they want to use from it. Color code it as well, and kids don't forget kids. And also number. So number one, number one is facing the couple, bride and groom, groom and groom, bride and bride on the table we go then clockwise round Mm -hmm. so the person nine is essentially still facing two is still facing yeah and then six is got the back to you fine um send this to your caterers early enough please don't send it like the day before Mm -hmm. it's impossible to i mean they won't let you but send it to your stylist will need it your coordinator will need it your caterer will need it the venue will need it just get it done it's always easier to make changes because i did a video this morning actually about dropouts there's always dropouts Mm. all you need to be able to say is Dave's not coming. Also, table four. Get if you're rid. hiring crockery and cutlery, we mm-hmm. need to know if you need soup spoons. Yes, don't forget soup Especially spoons. Especially if you've got like ve- vegan, vegans. Yeah. And that's when people forget. Um, I've got loads of questions. Do you want to give me some quick fires? Yeah. Okay. okay. You ready? Quick fire. Yeah. What food should be avoided? Um, mm. Oh, anything that's a bit too controversial, veal. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, and then just spicy i think is another one i wet, did a wedding as a supplier so it obviously doesn't really matter but the food was really spicy so it was like if you didn't like it you yeah know, you're screwed i also think that's important though with like culture though because the traditional asian weddings mm. i've had people say it's not spicy enough so yeah. it's again reading your audience and knowing yeah. knowing, knowing what's what is chicken boring <laughs> <laughs> um no but Jazz Chicken, it up. potato, and veg is a bit boring. Yeah, I jazz it up. Yeah, something. Just a little something. Sort of How many people do you need wedding cake for? So if you're serving it for dessert, you need more than the amount of guests you have because you've got to allow wastage for the caterers cutting up. It's really, it's actually really hard to cut up a wedding cake. You have to cut the ends off to make them nice looking slices. It doesn't doesn't always work out like that. So you need more than that for the evening. It's kind of going to be know your audience. Always ask your caterers to cut up half of each bit and save some and then they can always put out more but i would say if you've got 100 guests you'd want it for if you do it for the evening maybe 70 cool what works well as evening food carbs pizza um street food chips i think the best evening food is hot and carby i'm not a fan of bacon baps if i'm being honest i'm i'm not a fan of bacon i mean i'm vegetarian so it doesn't really help but I, I don't I think it's just a poor excuse. Yeah, I don't. That's quite a bold that. statement for me to make. So if you're having bacon baps, I'm sorry. But I feel I just like you could do something more exciting. You could do so- even do burgers. You yeah, know, sliders. like build your own burgers. I sliders. Like, um, I love evening canapes as well. Mm. Like they're a little bit bigger. So things like sliders, little fish and chip cones. Yeah. I just think something that people can grab and go. Because you don't want people off the dance floor. You don't want, you want, the, grab a slice of pizza and come on the dance floor. Mm, yeah. I, fun fact, I didn't want pizzas at our wedding because that i see it so often and that was the only thing brian put his foot down on i'm so glad you did because i had yeah, i loved it i love pizzas i know it works i just wanted to i wanted to be different and blah 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 mm-hmm. how many canapes per guest at least four at, at least. least i don't I... understand why there's three it shouldn't be allowed at least four because they're not unless they're massive but they're not normally i'd say six i mean but as a minimum four mm-hmm. friend is but the same caterer as us scared of having the same food just ask, ask. him ask him yeah yeah. What if you both like it though, and then you have to compromise? Mm. It's but what also, it is. But half the guests won't. Be I was going to say, what? How many guests have you got that are the same? And I really wouldn't worry about. And that. if you're, if they're first, it's good because you can try yeah. it. And if it's shit, you <laughs> it's can like a menu it. tasting. Um, thoughts on not having a wedding breakfast? Um, you have to have something. I don't mind when people just go for an evening. Do mm-hmm. like but you, food. You just have. You have to have food. No, you don't. You do. You have to have food. Uh, I think we should be seated for food, but my partner wants food trucks. I'm a messy eater. <laughs> uh, see, I personally like seated food, as in I don't mind going up to a street food van and getting it, but then coming and sitting down. I think for a, maybe it's a boy girl thing, but for a woman, I want a nice, pretty looking table. That bit makes it feel wedding-y for me. But also I think I hate like, like you said, you might have a drink in your hand, then you've got yeah. this and it's just too much going on. Like, for, a, like, for a meal, I, I think it needs to be, but for like a grazing start yeah kind of thing. That's even fine. if you do that um hello fresh gusto style that we talked about where it is just help yourself you still have got to have tables because mm-hmm. people i want to sit down with a knife and fork and eat my food italian buffet in the evening pizza meats cheeses mm-hmm. yep <laughs> <laughs> can um, i just say one thing about cheese 
um love a cheesecake love a cheese board love the cheese please don't forget that it, if it's hot it smells you can't keep it out all day it needs to be refrigerated mm-hmm why are roast potatoes always soggy? <laughs> I agree. And there's nothing better than a good it's roast potato. just prep, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I would change to dough Um Easier to mass cook. If we're having main food at five, do we have to have evening food? Yes. What time? So if your food was at five, you'd probably finish, let's assume you're doing two courses for the sake of this, you'd finish at half six, half seven, half eight, no earlier than nine. And you do, you do have to have something in the evening because I think sometimes people forget Yes, on a normal day, if you ate at 5 p.m., you might be all right. But you're drinking, you're dancing, and you're up till midnight. You and you've probably to, not had lunch. Yeah, you've got to fill your... You've got to line your tummy. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do we phrase dietary requirements? In the invite, we won't be able to choose our menu until after the invites go out. And what if we don't choose chicken? Um, just just put on there, please, please let us know of any dietary requirements you have. Also, if you are a wedding guest and somebody puts on the invites, please let me know dietary requirements. You're like, I don't like this. I don't That's like tomatoes. not a dietary requirement. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's not. I agree. 100% agree. You, a dietary requirement is something that you cannot eat um, for, for proper reasons. I don't care if you don't like aubergines. Yeah. You just, you'll eat around it. Uh, what is the reason a lot of venues only allow you to use their catering and not external? Um, it's normally because of the kitchens. It's normally profit. They make money. They they can charge less on the venue because actually they're making the money mm-hmm. in the food. It can be sometimes like this is another reason for um recommended caterers, and it's probably the biggest reason is that people can't as guests they don't distinguish the difference between the venue and the catering. They're the same thing. Yeah. So if you hire a venue and then bring in a shit caterer, the venue won't like that because all you'll do is making it look like they're bad. So I, I get why people say, here's a choice of five. You can only pick one of those. They know what they like in the kitchen. They know they're tidy. They know they serve well. No issues. Yeah, and they have to follow their health and safety regs yeah. and all of that. <laughs> is it okay to have a hot buffet where you have to go up and get food? Yes, but again, it needs to look nice. It needs to be called up table by table. If you do any kind of, and this is not a sales tactic, but if you're doing any kind of catering that's slightly different, you need a coordinator um how would you work a buffet slash barbecue style meal in february i would have the meats being cooked on the barbecue i'd put all the salads and sides onto each table and then have a backup plan for rain should you play it safe with menu choices or go what do you both love i think somewhere in the middle i think play it safe you have there's no point in inviting 100 people if you don't want them to have a nice time but like we wanted mexican food it's not for everybody but we wanted that so we made sure that it was like patatas bravas like is that even Mexican? Yeah. Um, but stuff that obviously people like. Evening food, catering for everyone or just a percentage of your guests? So if you are having no additional evening guests, I would say cater for 70%. That's exactly what I was going to say. Look at us. And if you are having evening guests, I would go 100% of your evening guests are going to eat and then the 70% from the daytime. Agree. That's nice. it. Oh, smashed them. Um, the last... Job? No. <laughs> I mean, you can, but we're not there yet. Oh. Quick questions for you then. Okay. What do you need to know food-wise when it comes to styling? Are you having sharing boards? Mm-hmm. What cutlery you need? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it being served on? Mm-hmm. What's What shape plate? Because mm-hmm. round charge plates can only have round plates. I hate <laughs> to break it to you, but that's the way it works. Round on round. Yeah. Timings. Mm-hmm. What size tables you're having. Mm-hmm. So pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, any quick tips for like, how to style say if food is the most important thing for somebody Mm -hmm. any quick tips on styling a table that is more minimal so that sharing balls and things can go down but still nice yeah just go for a more simple centerpiece um keep it keep the candles like low don't have tapered candles because the arms yeah and sleeves and things like that so make sure all open flames are covered um high centerpieces work great as well because it gives you more circumference at the base Mm -hmm. nice and be conscious of charge plates okay and final question do how do you feel about food being already down no no absolutely not why uh because i think you should be served um (laughs) you sounded like such a bitch then i think you should be served no i just you don't know how long it sat there like it just you know it's like you wouldn't go to a restaurant and the food would be there okay fine is that rude no it's your opinion it's your podcast Bread's allowed to be there. <laughs> Bread's allowed. Oh, I'm. 
I I don't disagree with you, but I have that wedding that I talked about before, where the big circular boards were on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that. that was the deck, like it was the decor. It was beautiful. Because sometimes you can't, if you're doing sharing boards, it's really, really difficult to yeah. put them down on the table when you've got guests there. Yeah, and like then move like, oh, can you just move that? Oh, can you just because what you don't realize is guests sit down, spread everything out, <laughs> they get comfortable, they're yeah. there for the duration, and they move like we can space it good for a caterer. And then the guests will just come in and put their bag down. Yeah. Or like, I hate when people put their bag. <laughs> <laughs> I also, do you know, another thing I really dislike um, is when people put jackets on the back of chairs. Yes, I, I agree. I don't know why. It just really gives me the ick. And it I just agree. like, you know, like some the photographers are taking like, yeah. room shots or speech shots and you've got someone's bloody bright yeah. red jacket. <laughs> ruining it. Ru- you're ruining it. Ruining everything. Right. Should we do a bitch from a bride? Bitches from a bride. I feel like food will come up more in life and that's okay we can do we can do more if you guys have more questions bff bfb bfb i have had enough of people messaging me asking to check their outfit for the wedding i've had over 20 messages most from the same person asking about whether an outfit is too pink my theme is navy and blush so unless it's bright hot pink no pink i don't think it's too hard to stay away from blush and white We've not said no navy suits, but we have asked that unless your parents know navy dresses, is that hard to understand? Um, what? Wow. Wow. Um, personally, yeah. If I'm being honest, yeah. I think your invite wasn't clear enough. Ooh. Yeah, but if she said it's navy and pink, don't wear navy dresses. What you got to do on the invite yeah. is say, the the bridal party are in navy and pink. Please, can you avoid these colours? Done. Women or men? Both. Yeah, but men, it's really hard to avoid a navy suit. I guess it's not. You don't want them in navy, do you? Cause the well, she said she didn't mind navy suits. Just got to be clearer. Set the expectation. Mm-hmm. Just be like, hey, our bridal party are in navy and pink. Please can we avoid those colours? Done. Oh. What do you think? Yeah, I just... And again, the person sending is trying not to offend you or upset that, you. That's what you have to and try and remember. And their genuine yeah. intentions aren't to be rude and annoying yeah, and fair. this. I would just be like, hey... Hey, hun. Thanks for the messages. Totally appreciate where you're coming from. Maybe just avoid pink. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I think sometimes when it comes to the drama and things around weddings, sometimes you have to remove yourself as the bride or groom from that situation and think, what are they actually doing here? So that person is messaging you because they want to check that they look nice, aren't they? They're f- they may be forgetting that you're really busy no, and you're not, trying to do a million no. things. They don't want to check they look nice. They no, just they want do. to check they that they're not going to upset you. Mm, by it's some, a bit of both. No, by some rules that you've put out what, which aren't clear. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get your invite and be like, sorry. So when you say no white... I mean, no fucking white. Do you no whitish? No, but I do <laughs> think it... like In the nicest way possible... I think when you get married, all your emotions are in heightened 100%. and the you're getting your head a little bit like you it's not the end of the world. Yeah. They're not being malicious and not being nasty. I mean some people are. And no, but everyone kind of feels like people are against them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's because you're trying to do one million things. I, oh, and the last thing you need is someone going, Is this too pink? For you're example. Like, Fuck off. For example, this is what I mean, it happens all the time at work. I'm in the middle of something and some one of my team will be like, Yeah, yeah. No. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. Stop mess. And that's why you have levels in where you, the processes and things are there yeah. so people can see it. So if you are strict on colours and you've asked people not to do it, be really clear. Yeah. Be crystal clear. Be stupidly clear and be like, and then if they came to you then, like, forgive me, your invites might be correct. Like, they might be. They might be clear. Mm-hmm. Then you go, are well, you fucking stupid? Should we do the tip, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> do you think I'm being mean? No. <laughs> hey, Bales. <laughs> shall I answer for you or for myself mm. Beth yeah. says no they're ick like garden games <laughs> yes or no <laughs> you know what the funny thing is I'm just going to go off topic a little bit I don't know if you've got shocking time. but <laughs> the client who I spoke to said that I gave them the ick about friends yeah fair whatever I don't care do, do you care actually <laughs> when she care. said it I was like <laughs> like me like me um, they're doing a sports day love it and everyone to me be like you don't like sport days I fucking love sports days but do you know when they're doing it? The next day. Okay. So they're doing it not, well, not on the a, wedding. It's not a sports day wedding then, is it? Regardless. I've got a wedding doing a game of rounders during the drink session and I am buzzing. Yeah, I'm not buzzing. I'm not offended by that. So what are you offended by? Jenga. <laughs> Connect four. 
like it. Do you know what I mean? It's yes. like you like your opinion. Um, it's all for a bit of fun, but yeah. I feel like I'm a bit contradicting sometimes. You are. This is but that's what I mean. Okay. I need the two different weddings to make it happen. But you're allowed your opinion. It's fine. So going back to hay bales, you're a no. Um, I'm not. No, I'm not. No. If that's the look, yeah. then they're great seating, but they yeah. are messy. They are messy. They are messy. They're not the most comfortable. They do need blankets on and you can't put them out if they're wet. You cannot, you cannot get them wet. So let's give an alternative. The problem is that they're cheap. Mm-hmm. So alternate, I would rather personally put picnic blankets on the floor than hay bales. Only because I'm not a hay bale kind of gal. Mm, I disagree there. But I'm, if it I'm the sticking vibe, with the hay bales, you know, because your gal, your nan's not going to want to sit on a picnic blanket on the floor. No, but I'm not. I'm not pitching that as the only seating. Okay, fine. But I, you can hire outside furniture. They are used for seating only, not decorative purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't use them for unless People it's a farm do. wedding. Oh, I don't like. You know when they make the bride and groom out of hay bales. <laughs> but only because I'm not a farm it. gal. Um, if you've grown up on a farm, people would drive in and be like hilarious yeah whereas if they drove into my wedding there's a hay bale georgie people will burn it <laughs> <laughs> again we're allowed our opinions yeah we're not trying to offend anyone no you can listen you, you do can you. take them do what you want to do and the thing is if you to me this is somebody... not for light-hearted people this podcast yes. let's and just if, be real if you have a reason for why you're doing something cool you do cool. you you do you um just we... don't come for me don't come for beth she'll cry she will cry and she will quit the podcast <laughs> Whilst we're on people quitting the podcast, um, Brian said that if you guys don't um, review the YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube and do something else with the YouTube, he's leaving. Oh. Are you actually going to leave, Brian? Yeah. He said he's going to leave. Okay, so we're on 700 subscribers and we need to get 1,000 before Brian cries. But fun fact is Mm -hmm. we've probably at this point, by the time this goes out, we've actually probably had 100,000 100,000 downloads on this podcast. Oh, you guys are awesome. We love you and we thoroughly appreciate every single person that listens. We thoroughly appreciate you, Brian. Thanks for doing it. Um, but we do genuinely really appreciate you guys for watching and coming back Brian every single week. Brian doesn't work for free. He's Georgie's husband. It's part of his role, it's a part of his life now. Yeah, see, it's a fun fact we don't pay Brian. <laughs> well, Georgie's men to pay Brian. We're all the same money. We share it. We're married now. Um, anyway, that's a whole other story. We are thinking of possibly getting Brian on an episode to do a whole grooms thing. So mm. we'll see. We'll see. See how you behave. Okay. Anyway, right. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope that helps. See you all next week. Don't hate me. Love you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye.